What on earth are Inter Milan doing, James? It's something that a lot of their fans are asking, uh, Chappers, because they knew the situation was bleak. Um, really, for the last six months, um, they've picked up the newspapers, they've turned on the radio, and they've heard stories about the club needing emergency financing, uh, that uh, all is not well uh, with the owner's uh, business interests in, in China. Um, and even though uh, at the end of May they were able to get a hedge fund, Oak Tree Capital, to loan them $275 million, and cynics would say that if you add up Hakimi, add up Lukaku, add up Lautaro, which we might get to, you get mm -hmm. to 275 million. Uh, they thought that Hakimi was the only one that was going to leave. I think you know the the canary in in the uh, uh, down the coal mine was was Antonio Conte. You know, ultimately, because Conte at the end of the season, after winning the league, and thinking, hoping that it was the beginning of something with Inter, that they could actually make serious inroads in the Champions League if they kept adding to the team. <laughs> um, he walked away. He, he agreed a sevens package with the club. They sold Hakimi. There were some protests at the time um, outside Inter's offices. Uh, and then things calmed. But things calmed because the Euros were going on. And as soon as they finished, it turns out you've had parallel talks. Lukaku and Chelsea, Lautaro and Tottenham, Atletico and Arsenal. Um, and, you know, as far as our reporting has told us so far, yeah, it was, you know, one sale precludes the other. But at the moment, Chappers, the owners have very little credibility. There's a feeling inside the club that even if the executive team wanted to resist the sale of Lukaku, because certainly Lukaku did not want to leave. Um, you know, he felt he had a special legacy um, at Inter, He'd become not only the face of that club, the face of Milan, but also the face of a league, which was supposed to be Cristiano Ronaldo's. That's no mean feat. It's huge for his brand as well. Um, and if he'd stuck around and retained the title, it would have been the 20th in Inter's history, which would have brought them a second star that they could put over their new crest. And that means an awful lot in Italy. If you're part of a team that does that, it kind of, consolidates your place in 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 the in, in in posterity so for him to leave i think it, it just goes to show for all the spin that we've heard that he came to the club he has to leave the club was still not reaching the financial targets it needed to make um for the end of the transfer window and i think fans are crossing their fingers and hoping no one else leaves well lataro will go sorry lataro will go We'll have to see. Ultimately, it's it's clear that Premier League clubs, they smell blood in the water and sharks are circling uh, right now. And, um, you know, if, if it wasn't Lukaku, it was him. We'll, we'll have to see if there is genuine resolve at Inter to keep a player who, let's not forget, is young, has considerable resale value. I mean, we're talking figures of 70 million basic fee, 20 million in add-ons. But he's only got two years left on his contract. And he changed his agents in April and his agents have said, okay, you agreed a, an, an extension with your previous agents, uh, but basically that couldn't be signed off on because of all these financial things going on in the background at Inter. And now the agents are okay with kind of, well, let's see what happens. At least let's see what happens in the final, final three weeks of this transfer window. James, can I ask, given everyone across Europe has known that Inter are financially very vulnerable this summer. How have they still managed to get really pretty good fees from PSG for Hakimi, Lukaku, Chelsea? You know, they managed to push them pretty much towards that 100 million figure. Lautaro seems like that's going to be pretty high as well. How, is that just the quality of the players? But because it doesn't seem like there was a, a race on for Lukaku. It was just Chelsea. I think it's a combination of things. I think the situation is different from Barcelona in as far as their elite players were signed for less money than, say, like Usman Dembele or Coutinho. And while Inter's wage bill is huge, what's expensive for Inter isn't expensive for a Premier League club, for an elite club in terms of wages. So, yeah, Hakimi was on a lot of money, but it was very easy for, for PSG basically to say, look, we can pay you more, as it is with Chelsea, who are essentially, I think, signed, confirmed this, almost 
doubling what he, he was on um, at Inter. Um, and then you have the very real issue that Inter have to recover their losses. Um, they have to conclude the original deals that brought these players to Inter. You know, into, it, with, with Ashraf Hakimi, it's the final installments on the deal that, that, that they signed with Real Madrid. With Lukaku, it's the final installments on, on, on the deal that they signed with Manchester United. So all of these things kind of have, have pushed, I think, those, uh, those fees a little bit higher. And also, I mean, there is significant cash. You know, I mean, Lukaku is the MVP of the league, the top scorer of the league. Um, I think he's as close as, as, as Chelsea could come to getting a guarantee of, of, of solving um, their problems at, at that number nine position, at least this summer. The Premier League is back and The Athletic is home to the biggest football podcast network in the world. My podcast with Mark Chapman is becoming The Athletic Football Podcast and there'll be three shows a week on that feed. Then there's the usual Totally Football Show with James Richardson, Raphael Honigstein, James Horncastle and the gang. We also have a range of dedicated club shows featuring the likes of James Pearce, Amy Lawrence and Phil Hay. Check them out for all the latest transfer news and updates from your team. Michael Cox and Tom Warville will showcase their unrivaled analytics knowledge on the Athletic Tactics podcast, while Adam Hurry's hilarious football cliches is now going twice a week. You've got all things WSL on the Athletic Women's Football podcast, take your fantasy football team to a new level with the Athletic FPL podcast and go further down the English pyramid with the Totally Football League show. So buckle up as we've got big plans for the new season. Listen to all our shows for free in all the usual places and ad-free when you subscribe to The Athletic.